Hello and welcome back to Outlook. I'm Rajan Datar. And we're off now to Syria to meet a scientist who risked her life to collect some seeds from a house in war-torn Aleppo. The road was not safe at that time. Fighting, bombing everywhere. I was afraid, but I have no choice. I, if I lose the seeds, I will lose 20 years' work. Dr. Safa Kumari is what's called a plant virologist, looking for solutions to epidemics that destroy crops. And she'll be telling us precisely why these seeds were so vital in a moment. Safa was born in the city of Aleppo in 1963, and she's the eldest of eight children. Back then, education would not have been seen as a priority for girls, but Safa was always determined to get to school. It was not easy for me to go to the school because at that time we go walking to the school because bus was not available for the student. Uh, the distance between my home to the school is more than 45 or maybe one hour walking every day. It really is not easy uh, for us uh, to do that, but uh, we did it. And when you were young, what did you want to grow up to be? To be honest, my dream was to be a human doctor. But unfortunately, my score at the high school was not enough. Uh, really, I was lucky I did not study the medicine because I'm very happy now in plant virology field. I'm a doctor, but not for a human, uh, for, for a plant, because also plants are very important for a human life. And without plant and food, we cannot survive. But just tell me, how usual, how normal was it for a girl when you were young to go to university? It was very difficult uh, at that time for young women to study agriculture and go to university at the same time. I'm talking about uh, 1980s. At that time, the number of the women at the university was around 3 to 5% of the students. But now, if you go to the university, you'll see the women are more than 50%. And in addition to that, the culture in, in Syria and mainly in Aleppo, also in our family, studying for the girls was unfamiliar, but fortunately, my dad is open-minded. So your father supported you? Yes, too much. <laughs> How did he support you? My dad was providing with me all the support and advice and everything I needed financially. He paid everything for me and he told me at that time, Safa, I will pay everything for you and you should be studying. So, study she did, a science degree at the University of Aleppo. And as part of her course, she paid a visit to a nearby organisation called ICADA, which stands for the International Centre for Agricultural Research in the Dry Areas. That day, she knew immediately that this was where her vocation lay. During my visit to ICADA, I realised that this is my dream. I was at that time 22 years old. And uh, I heard from one of my friends that ICADA and need daily workers to help them at the field. This was on March 1986. Next day, I visit ICARDA, and by chance, the labor's office asked me to work at the virology lab. I can say that now I'm very lucky because I work with well-known plant virologist. It's called Dr. Khad Makouk, and I learned from him a lot. And then I got to the ICARDA plant virologist position, and my virology is my baby. You specifically chose virology or you concentrated on virology. Tell me why you think plant virology is so important. Because uh, every day there is something new. Look now for Corona. For coronavirus, there's something, a new, a new disease. We have the same for the plant. Every day we have a new viruses. If you have fungal disease or bacterial disease, we'll give you any treatment. But if you have virus, it will be very, very dangerous for a human, for animal, as, as well as for a plant. Because we don't have a treatment. And if you have 50% plant infected, that means you will have 50% yield reduction. Can you imagine what will be happen for the poor farmers when they lose their stable crop and food? For example, during 1992, a severe virus epidemic affecting faba bean crop in Middle Egypt, leading to yield loss of faba bean at that time, over 90%. Now, if you're thinking now, what is the most important breakfast dish for Egyptian? And many countries in Africa is full and ta'miyah. 
Now, if you have 90% loss based on the virus disease, how can the people survive without food? And you know how the people are poor in that area. And also, uh, similar high incidence level for the same virus has been observed in regions like Syria, Jordan, Turkey, Tunis, North Africa, and others. But can you explain to me how they are being attacked? What kind of virus is attacking them? All these viruses are transmitted in different way. Some of them, they transmitted by seeds. But the most important is transmitted by insects. Because here, you, can, you don't have control for insects. Because the environment condition play an important role and virus spread. For example, when temperature raise, the aphids become active. Aphid or insect activity, multiple, and they spread the virus. So, Safa spent 20 years trying to find a solution to this, searching for plants which showed resistance to different viruses. Finally, she discovered a number of fava bean varieties, naturally immune to one particular disease called the fava bean necrotic yellow virus. She was ecstatic to have found the resistant plant, but for safekeeping during a period of intense conflict in the Civil War, she decided to keep the precious small sample of them at her sister's house in central Aleppo. But then, in October 2012, while Safa was at an international conference in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa, she got an important call. I received a telephone call from my mom informing me that they lost our buildings and then they went to Turkey. All of them, my mom, three brothers, and uh, with their family. After the conference in Addis Ababa, I changed my ticket and I went to Turkey to see my family. Then uh, I tried to return to Aleppo. I returned to Aleppo uh, through Adana Airport, Istanbul, Cairo, Damascus, Aleppo. Can you believe that? It was very long way and very difficult time. And dangerous. It's very, very, very dangerous. When I arrived to Damascus, they informed me that Aleppo airport was closed. Now, how I can reach Aleppo? The distance between Aleppo to Damascus around 350 kilometers. The road was not safe at that time. Fighting, bombing everywhere. After five days, I arrived to my sister's house and retrieved the seeds and other important materials. Why was it so important that you found those seeds? What would have happened if you hadn't been able to get them? If I lose the seeds, I will lose 20 years' work. And that would have meant that the resistant seed would not have been able to get to the farmers and many crops would have maybe been destroyed. Yeah. That's an incredibly important journey and you risked your life in a way to do that. Yeah, because, because I know how these seeds will help the farmers. So that one car journey was basically responsible for saving so many crops. How scared were you on that car journey from Damascus to Aleppo? Uh, I was afraid really at that time. I was afraid, but I have no choice. And the other thing is, is that uh, I think a company approached you to see if you could sell the technology to them, but you didn't want to sell. You wanted to distribute it free. Is that right? All material produced by Icarda, other seeds or any other things, should be distributed to farmers free of charge. This is our duty. I want to just ask you, Safa, do you enjoy your job? Oh, I love my job. Really, I feel happy when I offer something from my experience to a poor farmer or solve a problem. And he thanks me with a smile, really. I feel happy when I give advice and some information to a student who is looking for help and cannot obtain it. And you can see actual evidence every day now in Africa, in the Middle East, of your work and how it is actually saving crops. Yeah, I feel that uh, from inside I'm happy. And then uh, also I feel that I did my job. At the end, I did my job. How does your father feel about you? Is he proud? <laughs> yes, he is very proud of me and the position that I at Rich now. And also, sure, uh, when he looks to me, he feels that he accomplished uh, his mission as a successful father. And so he should. I was speaking there to plant virologist Dr. Safa Kumari.